Hey guys, welcome back to the B&B Farms Maple Channel. My name is Tony. Today we are down at the sawmill, our Woodland Mills HM126. And what are we talking about? You guessed it. You read the title. We're going to talk about our sawmill laser. Um, if you've watched any of our previous videos, you may have seen one we put out last year, I believe, where we fabricated this, this mount uh, to hold the laser onto the sawmill. My biggest concern with, with sawmill lasers when you buy them as the, the bracketry of the mounts they have is, they're, they're terrible. They're flimsy and they move around. They're not real rigid. So we designed a custom mount, fabricated that up to hold it. You can check that video out uh, if you like and see how we built that. I'll drop a link in the video description below. Now, why do we have a, a laser on our sawmill? Well, you know, it's pretty handy when you throw a round log up on that bunk and you're looking about where that first cut or those slabbing cuts are gonna be. If you can project the line all the way down from one end of that log to the other, you know exactly where that blade is going to travel and how much material you're going to take off. That's primarily the, the time that I use the laser. I don't use it for every cut, but you know, when I, when I do need it, when I have a question, it's nice to be able to project that line and, and see where that cut's going to be. And I won't lie, lasers are cool. I'd probably have a laser guided fly swatter if they made such a thing. And I'm not above leaving the front door open to encourage the uh, target practice to, to fly on in so I could use it. So yeah, lasers. Everybody's, you know, putting them on the sawmills right now. They're really popular. But in addition to the bracketry, the problem, we've solved that. There's another issue that I have with these sawmill lasers. And let me bring you over here and I'll show you what it is. All right, so here's our setup. We've got a bracket just bolted to this post right here on off switch no big deal there but the problem the problem lies with this power source it's three volts dc uses a couple of AAA batteries and this thing this minuscule flimsy battery box i guess you'd call it normally lives right up there it's held on with some sticky back velcro and every time i come down here it's fallen off and it's dangling by its wires just like what you see right there plus those three volts coming out of those those triple A's, it doesn't last very long. This thing eats batteries pretty quick. It must draw a lot of current, a lot of power. So uh, I think we need to upgrade the power source. My idea is to take a 12 volt battery along with a, a resistor to cut the voltage down to the three volts that we need. And I want to mount that, oh, somewhere right in there, about like that. And then we'll wire it up and we'll have a, a more robust power source when this thing runs runs down we'll just take it out and uh, charge it back up should be pretty simple famous last words so yeah that's our plan for today we're going to build a a power source uh actually we're not going to build the power source we're going to build a bracket to hold the power source so let's get up to the shop let's get fabricating thanks guys we're glad you're here We've got our battery tray made. Uh, I didn't show a whole lot of the fabrication on that. It's one inch angle iron. It's just, you know, you saw me marking it and cutting it and bending it and then welding it into, into this, this shape. Uh, to attach it, I was going to just drill right through it into this, this quarter inch plate, but I thought, well, maybe everybody wouldn't like that, you know, having a hole in your mill. So I ended up using these beam clamps. Uh, you can see one of them right here. They're drilled and tapped in a couple locations and to fasten the bracket to and then they have a clamping screw on the back side that you just tighten up and it pinches this quarter inch plate in between them got two of them on here and that way it's it's easily removable and uh there's no holes in your mill so that worked out pretty good i think it'll work real well out of the way of the blade uh hold the battery very securely yeah i like i like that a lot okay so that's going to do it for today. Uh, frankly, I got a late start. Didn't get out here as early as I wanted to. And, well, I'm going out for supper tonight. 
I don't want to be late for that. So we're going to pick this up tomorrow. We will finish up the wiring and hopefully put a log on the mill, fire this laser up, give it a workout, see what it looks like. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. All right, guys. So it's the next day. Just as I promised, we're back down at the sawmill. Let's get that electrical buttoned up and uh, see what this laser looks like. Here we go. So if you'll remember, we left off yesterday, we got this, this bracket, this battery bracket built and attached to the mill. We got our battery in it. Now we're gonna tackle this wiring. This is the original three volt power source, these, those AAA batteries I was telling you about. And it's just, uh, well, it's just kind of chintzy. So we're, we're gonna remove that and wire into this 12 volt battery. So the first thing we need to do is unhook this. All right, so I think we can just Take it out of this clip right here, right like that. And I wired up this quick disconnect, should be able to unplug it, perfect. So now all we need to do is put this same type of end down here on this 12 volt battery and we'll be able to plug it right into the existing wiring. Doesn't get much simpler than that. So we mentioned earlier that this, this laser operates off of three volts DC. Of course our battery, 12 volt battery is, duh, 12 volts. So we need something to knock that voltage down to a, you know, a level that the laser module can accept it. I've got this, this adapter right here. It's probably nothing more than a resistor I'm imagining, but uh, we're gonna install this in line between the, the battery and this connector and uh, drop our voltage down. So let's do that right now. Put some Velcro on it to hold it down. That should work just fine. Plug it in. All right, let's double check and make sure it's doing what it needs to be doing. We're gonna take our handy fluke meter, set it for DC volts. Pin it up there. First, we'll check our battery, which should be 12 volts. 13.03, that's fine. Let's check and see what we've got coming out of this adapter. And I have no idea what kind of polarity. I'm assuming that red will stick with positive, so we'll go, we'll go with that. 3.25, that's perfect. That'll, that laser module can use that without, without burning up. Everything looks good so far. Here we go. I can already tell that I don't like how this is gonna work out. See, I mean, it'll reach. You guys can see I can plug this in there but it is just, it's just too tight. So I think we're going to try to move this and we'll mount it on this angle iron up here, if we can. I may have to go get another piece of adhesive for this Velcro. Well, once it gets on there, it is on there. No. So we'll mount this up here. I'll let you in here and let you see that here in just a minute. We'll put it up there like that. There. Can you guys see that? Can you see that all right, how I've got it now? I like that a lot better. That's going to give us some more room up here. Everything's not really tight. It looks good and clean. Let's plug it in. Okay. Theoretically, it should work. Uh, I still have to take this bracket back off, paint it so that it doesn't rust and tidy up this wiring that's hanging out here. But, uh, you know, this is a good part. Let's fire the switch up, see if this laser comes on. Here we go.
guys down here and let you see this. Made our first cut on this log. Check that out. We had to do some adjusting on the laser. We have got it to where it's just splitting where that blade travels. I don't think that we can get it any closer than that. I mean, it is right, right there. As a matter of fact, if I come down here a little bit, I'm gonna show up. See that? See that green sawdust right there? That laser is just splitting right where that cut was. That makes me pretty happy. So let's go ahead, we'll rotate this log and we'll turn it into a camp. Here we go. Alright guys, there's our take on upgrading your sawmill laser. I hope you can take some of, of what we've shown you here today and put it towards your own sawmill, your own laser, and then figure out what works best for you. That upgraded power supply, that, that 12 volt battery, I can already tell it's going to be a game changer for us. So I'm really pleased with that. Well, I'm going to wrap it up and get out of here, guys. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we are trying to grow the channel. We've reached that 1,000 subscriber mark. Thank you all. That's all due to your guys' help. Also, Remember, get outside. It's good for you. Go outside, run the chainsaw, walk the dog, run a sawmill, whatever. Just get outside. It's good for you. Remember to be nice to one another. We could use a lot more of that these days. And guys, thanks for stopping by, and we will see you on the next video.